This discussion is important and we have this uh, summit between CELAC and the European Union. But to get into the mind of some of the European leaders, I want to call the uh, diplomats. Uh, some uh, days ago, we said to the uh, Euro News, and quote, it seems that the governments of Latin America and the Caribbean want to be seen as equal partners, yeah. unquote. That's not uh, 50 years ago, that's, that, is, that is happening today. It seems that they want to be seen as equal partners. So in that man's mind, uh, there are no equal uh, partners. I think that's a, a little bit the problem of, of, of the leadership in Europe, or some leadership in Europe, uh, actually to today. I think they did not see uh, the changes that happened uh, the last uh, years, that they <clears throat> did not see the illegal war against Iraq in 2003, how it definitely undermined the credibility of the United States. It was a, a breaking point. They failed also to see the financial crisis of 2008, how it was uh, undermining the credibility of the Western uh, financial institutions. That was also the second breaking point in how the reaction of this, uh, to this uh, financial crisis. The BRICS was founded, was a reaction uh, of this, uh, this uh, financial crisis. They did not see the, the, the breaking point of the pandemic in 2020 and, and, and the protection of the patents in the vaccine, etc. The third breaking point. And they did not see and they do not see the, the reaction <clears throat> to the war in Ukraine today. And I think it's important, I'm not talking about the condemning Russia's invasion, a violation of international law and a violation of the sovereignty of Ukraine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the sanctions. I'm talking about uh, the embargo, shutting down the SWIFT system in, in Russia, shutting down or, or freezing the central bank reserves, etc., etc. And I think everyone knows these sanctions today, the thefts against Russia, will be implied tomorrow against uh, other countries. And the thing are already implied against uh, many countries, like, for example, against Cuba when it's in the middle of it. Um, and so here in the West, uh, they failed to see this breaking point since 2003, these four main breaking points. And recently, uh, Fiona Hill, she was a staff member of the, the Security Council of the United States. She said that the votes against the sanctions in the United Nations was a mutiny of the South. So I, uh, I've been, always been a fan of mutiny, so I, I, I think it's a good thing that she said that. Uh, but to conclude, I think the world is rapidly changing. I really think the world is, is, is now a other place than 50 years ago. And that, 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 that we are somewhere seeing the convulsion of a descending world order and that the United States is retract, retreating itself into pro protectionism and new uh, trade war. And they want to, to reduce the world trade to, the same, to a zero sum game with only a winner or a loser. They want to force everyone to choose a camp in the new uh, Cold War, etc., etc. And in that context, is the question what position will Europe take in this conflict? What position will Europe take in, in this uh, context? And I think European Union, the Europe must fight its own way, its own democratic way. And that means separate from the United States, but also, also separate from its own colonial and neocolonial colonial past. I want to stress that uh, old school. And I do think that in order to move the European Union in that direction, we need a strong labor movement. We need to, do, uh, to have a strong labor movement. It will not happen from itself with this leadership in Europe. This will not happen that way. We need to uh, build a strong uh, labor movement, movement again in Europe. And it is possible. And if we link the mutiny in the north with the mutiny in the south, to speak like that, I think uh, we are a step uh, forward in, in the right direction.